Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlott Howard here in the home weather office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for Sunday, November the 5th, 2023. I'm sure hoping you have sprung your clocks back an hour because this video, while it might seem like it's coming out late, it's really not. Weather forecast, we're going to be talking about the Pacific Northwest because there are rounds and rounds of heavy rainfall, strong winds, more flooding. For Northern California, we could get brushed by some of these atmospheric rivers, and some of these storms could even redevelop into the Northern Plains and the Northeast in coming days. So a really active weather pattern is on the way with really warm temperatures too for the Midwest. Before I do get started, if you want to participate and follow my Sacramento Weather Center Facebook page, please click the link below this video to join today. It is 100% free. There is no cost whatsoever. I do weather forecasts all the way across the Sacramento region from Redding Point South all the way to Turlock, including for South Lake Tahoe. So if you're a local in my neck of the woods, you can get my daily updates on what's going on with California's wild weather pattern that we're anticipating for this weekend in early next week. Follow today. So this look at the GFS model over the next six hours or so. This is actually for tonight into early tomorrow morning for November the 5th and the 6th. And we can see where our system is actually located, the atmospheric river across Oregon and Washington into Northern California. We got another system here across the Dakotas. This one's gonna develop as it moves further east. But again, the thing in mind with this zonal flow that we have is these systems don't do very well. We need a wavy jet stream. We need a trough, we need a ridge, and we get more dynamic systems. But in this case, this thing is gonna be quick mover and it's gonna bring a little bit of rain along the way. So let's go into tomorrow early afternoon here. This is actually for a about one in the afternoon for Eastern time. And we can see there's our system there moving across the Northern Central Great Lakes. We got some snow, but that snow doesn't swing all the way southward because again, we have this zonal flow moving across and that keeps the colder air contained to the North that keeps the warmer air contained to the South. We have another system that develops here over the Pacific Northwest for Monday. And again, that's the second system. So these atmospheric rivers keep on coming and we're going to get more heavy rainfall and impacts. Now, by the middle of this week for Wednesday, November the 8th, 2023, we have a somewhat active pattern. But in fact, we have a more crazy temperature weather pattern that is coming to the United States. We're going to see one of the biggest warm-ups that we have ever dealt with so far this month of November. And in fact, might feel like spring or early fall for some locations. And yes, you heard it from my mouth. We're going to see a big warm-up this week. But otherwise, quiet weather for Wednesday. Let's go into see what Thursday wants to bring us. You can see for November 9th, while we do have an Arctic air mass that is over the north central u.s that arctic air mass is going to get shoved out because we have a ridge that's going to be building back into the region you'll see that here on the gfs model in fact a big warm-up is coming look at this the freezing line even not even over the united states at all only over this portion of the u.s for the northeast while much of the u.s here looking at some above average height above average temperatures and it's going to be really a game changer here for next weekend actually on the 12th speaking of that my friend's birthday is actually is actually on November the 12th. So happy birthday to you, Ian. Um, Ian Bobian. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, your birthday is here. Looks pretty dang calm for your birthday. Yes, it's awesome. What about my birthday, though? Let's go into November 15th. Let's fast forward through that. It looks a little active for my area. Hopefully the GFS comes true. I wouldn't mind it ra raining on my birthday. I wouldn't mind the strong winds too. We always are dry and warm. So a nice change in the weather pattern, rainy, cooler weather. Oh, I could ask for th that thousands and thousands of times because we never get anything on my birthday. While much of the US here looking pretty dry, really quiet. I mean, you all 
might want to have a lot more fun than you ever have before because it could be a really busy November otherwise. There's some Novembers it's been active. There's been some Novembers where it's been like this. But unfortunately, that is 10 days out. And you all know with this time of the year, the pattern goes completely. Sometimes it changes to extremes. And so we just don't know what the actual 10-day forecast is going to look like until we get closer. The precipitation forecast really delicates who's going to get some active weather and who is not going to participate in that. And unfortunately, Ethan B., you're in Indiana, looks to be really dry for your area. In fact, you might not get a drop in the next 16 days. That is just ridiculous. That is very, very dry. Actually, this goes out to um, a little over um, nine days. But if we go out to the next 10 days, I mean, that is ridiculous. Two to three inches below the long-term average per 16 days, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that rarely happens for Indiana, for Ohio, for Pennsylvania, for Missouri, really no rain at all in the forecast through at least the next 300 hours versus if you're down here in Texas, you might get some more active weather. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you all need rain down there. And especially for the Pacific Northwest, you're going to continue and continue to get storm after storm. The barrage of storms continues a parade. It should be for Oregon and Washington. For California, we're gonna get our fair share of wet weather too. Warm temperatures are on the way for the Midwest and check this out. For today, you're enjoying some mid 60s, upper 60s to lower 70s across Texas, Oklahoma. It's only going to get warmer from here. I promise you all, this is just the start of what is going to be a very relentless warm week ahead. So by the time we go into a Monday early afternoon. Look at these temperatures right down into the mid to upper 70s. We got some low 80s there in Texas. So in fact, it is going to be so warm. If you want 32 degrees or lower, you literally have to put your foot on the edge of North Dakota. Okay, on the border of Canada and North Dakota. So we're going to find the coldest temperatures out of the entire United States. Believe it or not. While a lot of areas, oh my goodness, it's just going to be really, really warm. It's also going to be warmer. Look at this. We are welcoming low 80s across much of the Midwest and the Deep South. Could even get close to the upper 80s in portions of Texas and Oklahoma for your Tuesday. And then it just gets warmer. Look at this. We got some mid 80s to talk about. Look at this. Indiana, you're going to be in the mid 70s. Mid 70s this time of the year. That is just phenomenal. Versus if you are in the Rocky Mountains, it's going to be much cooler, of course, because you're higher up in elevation. But there's also disturbed weather in that area. So you're going to be talking about temperatures in the 40s, 30s, and 20s. Oh my goodness, it's only going to get warmer. But the warmer air finally moves further south. But still, eh, up across Indiana, probably low 60s during the day. We got some mid-70s, uh, uh, low 80s to talk about if you're in Florida and then the pattern could change temporarily, but look at it warms back up again by the time we go into day 10. Your temperature anomalies are absolutely concerning. We could be talking about some monthly records, folks. We could be talking about widespread daily records in the books or uh, on the books of possibility. Okay, simply to put it, the GFS is wanting that. So let's go forward. You can see anything in the red and the pink that Tropical Tidbits has here delicates to above average temperatures. Well above, probably, again, daily records could be broken uh, from time to time here. And then it really, look at this. I mean, this is Wednesday afternoon. Look at this. We got some pink colors that it means that temperatures could be 25 to 35 degrees above normal. So again, we could see some monthly records being tested in Missouri, in Illinois, and even in the, in the into Indiana. And then you can see that warmer patch of air moves on through. So you're going to have some really crazy weather. Instead of probably getting the heavy jackets out, getting ready for fall, you might be in shorts and tank tops instead this coming work week. Temperatures return to near normal by next weekend on November the 11th, 2023. But don't worry, don't get too comfortable, folks, because the GFS has been indicating for a while now that you're going to have temperatures returning to well above
above seasonal averages out to day 10. So by my birthday, you're going to be sweating like a pig. No, I don't like to call you all pigs, but you know what I'm talking about. It's going to be unseasonably warm to even hot for some locations. Even the Climate Prediction Center is on board with the GFS. Look at this. This is the next six to 10 days where you're gonna have temperatures that are likely above average. I mean, Bismarck, Sioux Falls, Lincoln, Des Moines, Minneapolis, you have a 60 to 70% chance that you're gonna have temperatures above average. Indiana, not there yet. But let's flip the calendar to 8 to 14 days from now, and this is where it really is something else. Look at this. There is an 80% chance you're going to have temperatures above average. That means it's going to likely happen. No Arctic outbreaks, nothing to worry about as far as plants freezing, your pets um going outside and it being super cold it's gonna be a whole different ball game here lots of above average temperatures here for the midwest with near average to possibly a chance of below average temperatures for california nevada and oregon that topped with below average precipitation for the northern plains for the great lakes in the northeast could really exacerbate the fire probability forecast we could be looking at high fire danger potentially over these areas some of you are in serious drought so dry weather and hot weather gonna real it's just gonna be painful to get through because of this el nino this really does look like an el nino pattern with above average to the south and also off towards the west with below average in the midwest so really el nino like eight to 14 days very similar possibly slightly below average chances for precipitation precipitation if i say and tongue twister, but you get the idea. It's not looking good at all for the Great Lakes in the Northeast over the next couple of weeks. Whereas if you're in the Southwest, including for California, we're in good hands here. We're looking at more rainfall to come, which is good for any drought that we have left in California. Virtually nothing, no drought in California, but we could use what we can get. You know what I mean? So what is up with this chaos, cocky, wacky weather pattern? Well, you can blame it on the zonal flow that we're going to experience with amplified ridging across the Midwest. Let's take this forward on our GFS model from Tropical Tidbits. So let's move that forward if it will actually let me. And we can see here in the next three days, there's your ridge and the oranges on this map do delegate to above average heights. If you're in the blue, that means below average heights are expected, usually cooler weather. But take note of this. Look what happens. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO, we got a ridge that could be building by the time we go into the following week. That's right around my birthday here. By Monday, Tuesday, big ridge across the Midwest. Really going to exacerbate the fire danger, the drought conditions, very little in the way of rainfall. Nothing that Ethan likes to see. And Ethan keeps on telling me, I wish we could have severe weather. I wish we could have more snowstorms and this and that, below average temperatures, you know. Well, Ethan, I am so sorry, brother. You're not going to see much at all, probably nothing over the next 10 to 15 days. Now, if you want to get more detailed, in-depth weather reports, go to Sacramento Weather Center group or Facebook page today, right now, and follow me. It's 100% free. There is no cost whatsoever. I do make awesome graphics like your awesome seven-day Sacramento Weather Center forecast, including with the details on that i also make really awesome graphics so if you all want to follow me there at the sacramento weather center group do it today there will be a link in the description below this video well that's going to sum it up for today's detailed weather forecast for the entire united states over the next couple of weeks if you did enjoy today's video please consider subscribing if you're new if you love the content that i do present you all please consider subscribing hitting the like button and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media and most importantly be sure you do ring the bell notification icon to get all notifications every time i have an upload out you'll get notified if you make if you press the bell icon and it says all notifications okay make sure you do that 